So the last time where we left off was that we had this um, system of capturing the person's input under Save Comics. Uh, we started to uh, work with that. There's still setup that that needs because we we had that realization about if a comic has the words the or a you know it has those sort of filler words that don't help during alphabetization we need to deal with that so we were still working with that I'm gonna go back to let's go back to index.js and we'll go to the last bit of code we were working on probably at the end of the document so index.js And this is over at um, line, we can start at 189. At 189, we have this function prep comic. This is preparing the comic for us to use, which eventually, once it's prepared, we have line 206 return. Return temp comic, return the temporary version of us preparing it. It returns it. Eventually, then on 215, we create a variable called a comic, which is based on prep comic, which is uh, after the comic is prepared, then we can use it and put it in the database. But well, we're still preparing it, and what we need to do is deal with that. About um, at the moment, we've got line 198. Remember, in PouchDB, we have to have an underscore ID field to differentiate every element or object from every other object or record in the database. This is all ultimately to store in the database. We need a unique ID. And just for proof of concept, I had put the val in title as the ID. Well, I want to use the name of the comic, the number of the comic, and the year of the comic. All three of those should be enough so that what we have is an utterly unique ID because throughout the history of comics there are many comics that have like amazing in the title amazing fantasy amazing spider-man amazing adventures whatever so we want uh, that uniqueness we're gonna create then uh, another function that will be used to further the um, get the uniqueness out of the title specifically to remove the and uh, and so forth. So let's back up before prep comic. I'm going to create a new function here. This, the, the purpose of this function is to get the first word of the comic. Let's say function to get the first word of a comic. Call this fn get first word this will have a, a an argument su supplied eventually which we'll call str string we're going to use this function we're going to feed it a string we're going to feed it what val in title is whatever the person typed into the title field so we're passing in the variable, the data, in string. There are comics that are titled The Amazing Spider-Man. And there are comics that are titled, um, you know, Hero Cat, or simply Cat, or The Cat. There's such a variety of titles of books. And there are titles of books that are perhaps also only one word long. There is no the or a and so forth. So we're, we'll create an if else statement here to check are we dealing with a one word comic title or a multi word comic title? So this if else is designed uh, check if the comic supplied is a one word title or not.
Uh, before I forget, so this is end of function get first word. We can say this is end of the if else. Checking if only one word. <coughs> So we're using if else uh, to check, in this case, two possibilities. Either the comic is composed of one title, or uh, has multiple, or one word, or has multiple words. Um, let's say there's some Scooby-Doo comics. There's, you know, the Scooby-Doo Adventures, or there's a comic simply called Scooby. So that one only has the title Scooby. So this is what we're checking here. And we will do this as str dot index of method. We have various methods in JavaScript that we can apply upon strings. One of them is index of. Every string has has technically an index. The word hello has H-E-L-L-O. It has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It has four uh, index values, starting from 0. H-E-L-L-O. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Sort of like an array. So built into the string, we can check uh, the position, the index of a string. What we're trying to check here inside of index of is, OK, what, what particular character are you trying to look for? So in quotes, let's say A. We're trying to find the first instance of the letter A in this string. What will happen after running index of and searching for A, it'll give us back a number, an index, starting from 0. So if I have uh, you know, a comic called Top Cat, It'll count T O P C A T. You know, it'll get to a certain index value and give it back to us a certain number. Well, we want to deal with um, the first word uh, of the title. So what we're actually searching for is an empty, the first example of an empty space, because an empty space is not nothing. It's just it's just invisible. Internally, an empty space is ASCII character 32. So an empty space is not nothing. It is something. So we're saying, when, when is the first instance or index of an empty space? Um, there's the possibility that there is no um, actual empty space. Like I'm saying, there's a comic called Scooby. So there's no, there's no second word. There's no empty space. So we're going to say triple equals negative 1. This is the one checking that there's no, basically that there's no empty space. So if it's true that we never get to a second word, that's what this whole part is. The comic only has a one word title. Else, or else, it has a multi word title. So from this first section, uh, we would catch a comic called, you know, Blob. And in the second one, we would catch a comic called The Blob. That's what this is checking. Find the first instance of an empty space. Well, there's no empty space. That's the name of it. That's what that's checking. So in here, that's what we caught. And over here, it would be the different multi-words. Yes. That, uh, like I said, has to do with that it is not existing. We uh, we're checking that it's not. There's no instance of that, basically. It's just kind of a convention of JavaScript uses another language as well. It doesn't return a value. Then it's always like doesn't return a value. Yeah, if it didn't find it. Some languages, um, you know, how we have uh, zero or one 
yes or no, I guess, negative one, like for no. So that's what this first part is trying to find. And if there is no extra word, um, all that we're going to do then is we're going to return str. Whatever the name of the comic is, if it's just one word, return it as is. Don't process it. The point of this function is to process it to have us get the first word. Because in a moment, I want to then, is that first word the? Is that first <coughs> word a? You know, what is the first word? If it's only one word, it'll return it as is. So then in the else part, this is where it will extract what was that first word so that then we can deal with checking. Was it the, was it a, uh, etc. So here we're going to return instead str dot sub str. This is short for substring. This is sort of like create a copy of the current string based on some parameters. So we're going to return here the first word that we encounter. When we reach the first empty space, that must be a word. Let's return what that is before that empty, before that empty space. So the way this works is our starting point, 0. I'll see right here, it, Visual Studio pops up to also say, gets a substring beginning at the specified location and having the specified length. Length, the number of characters to include in the return substring. So I, I know Visual Studio pops up a lot, and it's usually you know, completing, auto-completing for us. But it often can also kind of pop up and give you definitions about what the code is. And yes, it is in a very technical way, but this is what it's saying. We're, we're going to get a string. We're going to create a string starting from some place, comma, going up to a length optional. And it'll return a, a string. So we're saying start from the zeroth position. So if I have the Amazing Spider-Man, T-H-E space A Amazing. When it gets to that first, zero, uh, that first empty character, then T-H-E should be what it captures. Well, up until that empty space, so again, the empty space based on where it is in the string, str dot index of where is that empty string. And there is a space there. Several times we've done double quotes with nothing in the middle. That's different. We are here saying, start from the zeroth letter and go to the first instance of an empty space and then return that ultimately. So it would return the word the. This one would return blob, because it's one word. So we can say with sub, sub str, that's substring. Create a copy of the string, but only the first word starts from zero with string position, right? the first letter, up to, up to but excluding, I believe excluding, I'll double check that, excluding the up to the first instance of empty space. Substring requires a starting and ending point in in uh, in numbers in, in numeric format. So it could be the so zero one two three. So it'd be from zero to three. If it's the word a, uh, then it would be zero one. It would go from zero to one. So we're checking that dynamically. When do we find the first empty space? So this function's purpose is to extract the first word of the comic. And if the comic is only a one-word comic, 
it returns the whole thing because it's a one word comic function get first word we're going to use that in our prep comic function to further prepare the comic So this, this function is, if you notice, mostly comments. The, the nitty-gritty of it is only like three lines. But what that does is it grabs the first word, ultimately. You just check your spelling, s, substring, etc. We'll go back to our prep comic. Right over here, prep comic. Before we, uh, before we bundle it together in JSON format, that's where we're further um, preparing it. So back up before the tenth comic, JSON object, JSON formatted object. Create a variable here called temp ID one equal to function get first word function guess get first word based on val in title up here we said let's check the value of what the person typed into that field stored in this variable. Over here, we're saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna need to do some shenanigans here. So uh, let's create a temporary copy of that, but only its first word. Further, at the end here, um, remember uppercase and lowercase letters matter, and a capital A is different than a lowercase a. So when later on we're checking, is the first letter the? Is the first word the, or is the first word the, capital T, capital H, or capital T, lowercase t? We're going to force this to uppercase, just so that we're sure that whatever we're working with is in one case, so that there's no ambiguity of was it uppercase A or lowercase a. Comma, I also want to have temp ID 2 because we're going to do various things with our input. This one is basically a copy of val in title, also forced to uppercase. The person may be quickly typing in the title, Amazing Spider-Man, but they don't put the capital letters and all of that. And when we save it to the database, there would be a different record created for uppercase Spider-Man and lowercase Spider-Man, so again, we'll force it to uppercase. And one more, temp ID 3. This one will be an empty string for the moment. You can say here, temporary copies. of the title input the first word and the title all uppercase and an empty temp ID 3 which will come into play in a moment when we check did they type the or a uh, or whatever other words we delineate as unnecessary Next line, this is still before the temp a comic, temp comic, is where we'll have a switch, <coughs> switch statement.
So this switch statement checks existence of a, the, etc. and replaces or removes them as unnecessary. So remember the syntax of switch, uh, we uh, feed it a, uh, a statement to check the condition, and then we get uh, cases. So let's do for the moment case A. We'll just write the basic syntax, um, and then we'll fill in the details. We can have a case B, statements. Case C statements and then a default So on our switch, we'll, we'll check what was that first word that we've extracted. A, the case could be the, or a, or, a, or you know, any other, other examples. Maybe uh, we're going to set it up also that we're going to capture uh, you know, words or uh, titles of comics in different languages. And in different languages, um, there would be different starting words that would also be irrelevant for alphabeti alphabetization. And then a default. Um, ending case. So what we're checking here in the switch is temp ID one. Temp ID one contains the first word that we that we prepared function get first word changed to uppercase. So let's see here what is it in the case. The example of the in full capital letters, not T H E like this. This will always never catch it, because we set up here to uppercase. Whatever was the first word, change it to uppercase. So the written like this is completely different than the written like this. And for the moment, these will have a console output to uh, confirm that we're on the right track. We'll say comic had the. title we have another case where we're looking out for a a super cat comic number one so uh, is also a word that I don't want to a by itself is a word I don't want to um, pay attention to so here is the same sort of thing. I'll just copy this, paste it here, and this is comic had a uh, in the title. <coughs> a third case, we could say an, an amazing adventure. Um, this is just an example. I'm putting here three cases, but as you are making your own app and such. You might not need three cases, just two cases, but here I'm showing we can have as many of these cases as we need as makes sense. And what I would say here also, that this is comic had N in the title. Default is, well, there, um, the comic had neither or none of those. And then we could also uh, output it as we're testing it. We've uh, gotten to the default condition. We're testing and testing and testing. Works great. And then as we test even more, suddenly at one point we trip default. Well, what was it? What, what did we type that 
that didn't trip the first three, so here it's a good idea to output what was that first word, just for me to see as I beta test it, alpha test it. Both of uh, all of those force of habit. At this point, we should be able to try to test this out and see if we get some results. Save the files, run it in the browser or uh, the device, and we'll check the console. I'll load mine up in a moment. And what we want to see here is uh, by testing it, I, I will type, for example, the spider and then I'll click um, I'll click save the second part about the JSON thing it's it's not there yet we're still figuring this out so if in the uh, output I'm gonna get either console from the uh, or an or I could try to get a default so this is the part where we're gonna test it in the device try to save a comic just make it up we call it the spider see how see what happens or an amazing adventure uh, or something with the letter a or something with nothing and see if you get some output in your console uh, actually before that it's going to be a good idea to check your error list uh, before you go out to test it I've got these ones about missing semicolon as I uh, looked at people's work last time um, this one popped up for a f with a few instances. These are warnings where it says missing semicolon. You could go in and fix those if you want. It is telling you that in some instances there could be spots where a semicolon would make technically sense. Like when we had back button, we had that function. Technically that's, that's a statement in an anonymous function. Technically that should have a semicolon. That's what that's saying. It'll probably work just fine. But to get rid of these, I will go in and clean these out. These are all going to say you need an extra semicolon. And if you see some other ones about recompile with excellent, I would ignore those for the moment. What else? Some input files use an override deprecated API. I would ignore those as well. I just had those warnings. I will save it and run it on my device. Let me check my console. And I'll check yours if it didn't quite work. Sorry, eventually my screen's going to change from the debugging. Let me see if I can get back to it. Okay, so on my device, let's see. It logged me into the home screen. Go to save comic screen. I'll type the spider. Spelling doesn't quite matter. I mean capitalization and such. I'll type the spider. I do have required fields of title, number, and year. Those are the only ones you really need to fill in as we test it at the moment. Uh, if you try to save without those, you should get pop-ups in the device that say make sure you fill in the required ones. So for testing purposes and speed, we only need title and number in year at the moment. So I'll do the spider, number one, year 1999. After that, I'll click save. So I have output right there. Comic had the in title. And then that other part to ignore for the moment. Let me try that with a different one. I'll put a spider. I'll put it lowercase a. 
We save that. Pops up. Comic had a uh, in the title. Uppercase A because the to uppercase method forced it to uppercase. I wrote it lowercase. This time I'm going to write it only spider number one. And save that. Comic had none of those. And I wrote spider. Spider-Man Enter on that. Comic had none of those. Spider-Man. So it found that word. Those words. there if it didn't work any any questions So we had the function prep comic. Its purpose was to grab the first word. Further inside of, no, uh, we had the function uh, get first word to get the first word. Then we're in prep comic. So to further prepare, if I do get some output here in the console, confirming that is seeing either the, a, uh, an, or none of the above, it's then time to um, create the the copy of the comic without that extra word. So in the in the the case, temp ID three is equal to. temp id2 dot replace method replace is um, a method uh, related to strings that will let us find an instance of some text in a string and replace it with another bit of a string. So I, I'm going to have the amazing Spider-Man. And I want to remove the. We still have copies of the name in the original full length with the original words. That's why we have temp1 and temp2 and temp3. So we want a copy of the of the name of the comic without the, but we st but we don't want to completely remove the word the and lose it. So we still have copies of that. So what we're doing here under replace, this requires a um, it requires the argument of what are we replacing and what are we replacing it with. So we're replacing the space. So uh, checking my notes. It, there is the space there when we had up there um, substring. It was inclusive of the empty space. And we had it up over over here, line 200. When we had a substring index uh, from 0 to empty space, it was including the empty space. So I remember last semester this was causing us trouble. We do want to include here. Find the instance of the plus the space, comma, replace it with empty. So it replaces text in a string using a regular expression or search string. So it's got a search value, comma, a replace value, and there's strings. So 
create or update uh, variable or update uh, temp title temp title without the word the and the empty space. Yes. Would it replace just one instance of it or all? The first instance, yes. There is a way to do it globally in that wherever the word the is, it will remove it all times. Here the default is the first instance of it. Further, then we'll say temp ID three is then going to be set to temp ID three dot substring this time from 0 to 3 okay so step 1 update temp title without the word the so if we have the amazing spider-man this first line here gives us back only amazing spider-man but then what I want is only the first three letters. Ultimately, my, my ID, my underscore ID, is going to be made out of the first three letters of the comic plus the issue number plus the year. So I don't want the whole, the amazing Spider-Man, to be the whole ID. I only want the first three letters, A-M-A. -A. This is why it's very important. We're taking out the. We're taking out a. Uh, we're taking out N. There's so many comics with the or a uh, or an that the important part of the comic, AMA, Amazing Spider-Man, is going to get lost um, if I don't strip out the. Second step, then only um, keep the first three letters of the cleaned up title. And then we break, and then we don't process anything more. We've met the first condition. We've realized that the word plugged in was the, and then we've cleaned it up as necessary. We'll do something similar with a. Uh. We find that it's the word a uh, all by itself, a, a with a space. Obviously, if it starts as Amazing Spider-Man, it's not going to remove the a in Amazing Spider-Man. It's going to remove the a by itself because we on the previous function we had uh, find it for the where that letter is and it ends with a with an empty space so we do uh, pretty much the same thing here but just replacing with a so I'll write it longhand then we'll copy it for the third one again it's going to be temp 3 equal to temp 2 replace this time any instances of capital A space replace it with empty and then grab what those first three letters are It is 3, because we go 0, 1, 2, 3. So this one is exclusive of the final one. So it wouldn't be 
it wouldn't be that fourth position. What's that? Just wondering why you have B being well, three as well and A being three. Because ultimately we're not paying attention to A anymore. We're paying attention to what is the word besides A. If the comic was a uh, super cat. We've already taken out a, uh, so it's super, S-U-P. So are you, I mean, they, they have to be guaranteed to be unique, right? So you don't think you'd have two comments that are the amazing something or another and the amazing something somebody, something else? Yes, that's why going a little bit further, we will cover that. Oh, okay. So we're going to grab the first three letters. If it's a, uh, and then again for N, same thing. We're going to grab the first three letters, excluding N, because we're in the case of N. In this case, I will basically copy this example here and just change it to N. So N. The default case is there. there is no comic with a uh, or an or the. It's just a comic with a full name. So that one is just going to be simply the part here about grab the, the first three letters of the name of the comic. be empty because this is checking for um, the hmm, let me check that yeah it is empty up here but it wouldn't be oh yes yeah, sorry temp ID 2 good eye we're doing here temp ID 3 was empty before but then we rewrote it here and then we used it but yes, right here, um, not the empty um, ID, the one with the unedited version of the, of the name. So up here, temp ID 2 is the unedited version of the name because it's the instance that doesn't have the or a uh, or an. Okay, so we have these um, temp2 and temp3. Um, temporary IDs that we're working with, and ultimately we end up with version 3. After we process things up a bit, we end up with version 3. And version 3 is what's going to be used ultimately uh, to start to create the unique ID. So now when we go over to our our temp comic in JSON format. Okay, so this was on, this was temporary earlier. It's not going to be val in title. Uh, again, there's that issue about the the non uniqueness. Yes, there are plenty of comics that start with amazing, amazing fantasy, amazing Spider Man, amazing adventures, etc. So based on those first three letters plus other things that we have of uniqueness, this is where we will create the unique ID. So now back to the ID here. Well, we're started with temp ID 3, because that has the three letters that we get started with, plus space. So some concatenation. We're taking what are those first three letters that we went through all those hoops to figure out what are the first three letters of the comic. Then we're also going to add to it the val in number.
So here it's taking the issue number. If it's Amazing Spider-Man number one, it'll be M A M A one, and so forth. Now the uniqueness issue is still in question here. There is examples of Amazing Spider-Man number one and Amazing Fantasy number one. Obviously, the second word is different, but the first word is the same. Amazing. So we could then, from this ID, further add other aspects of the uniqueness, such as the year plus val in year, that could give us a a uh, a, a most uniqueness probably. So plus val in year. So there most likely isn't a um, amazing something comic number one in the exact same year. There could definitely be. So in a further step here, we'll get even more specific um, because this, this is the problem with uniqueness of things. That's why there's only one example of one person on a social network that is named Victor Campos. Um, something has to be so unique that no one else can claim that name, like an email and such. So we'll create another field over here that will store even more of the uniqueness of the data. Let's say right over here, after notes, comma, one more, we'll call this unique ID. In this case, this is where we're going to have the val in title complete with the words the, but we're going to replace using a regex, regular expression, backslash, forward slash, then backslash s, then, then uh, forward slash g, comma empty. Um, this one uh, is white space. The special backslash character is white space. So we're saying here, uh, let's go. Let's go through the the title, the Amazing Spider-Man, and wherever <coughs> there's an instance of white space globally. That's the the question that you had uh, earlier about can it be done more than once? This is globally, so do it throughout the whole string. Replace it with nothing. So we're replacing here all instances of an empty space with nothing. We're also then going to force this to uppercase. Yes? Uh, there's a, there's an L in the place. Repace, so I'm using the alternate spelling. <laughs> Repass, replace. Replace. Uh, to uppercase, and then um, this is where we're adding also the val in number. And then the val in year. Now the point of this is, again, depending on the, on the ultimate goal, of the app, of the project, of the developer, the style, etc. There's many ways to do the same thing. So this is something that could be set up simply for the ID itself also. But let's say the requirement is that an ID has to be short. It has to be three letters plus a couple numbers and so forth. So here I'm just showing different ways, hopefully, for you to think about, well, maybe this will work better for this sort of project or for this other kind of project. So the, the, the power of all of these languages is that there's so many ways to do the same thing, and it's, they're all valid, and depending what I need to do, it's the right answer. So because if I had the requirement that I can only have three letters, well, here's another way to get around that. I've got this other field called Unique ID, which is the full name of the comic including the, but no white spaces, uppercase, number, and year. And then further, there could still be conflicts. Uh, you know, a hundred years of history of comic books, there's bound to be comics that are so similarly titled, and at another step we will have another check to see is it a completely unique um, entity in the database. But now we have a unique ID and we have these various fields. 
we can test this to um, see some output. Um, we'll do one more thing here um, before we test it. Ultimately, we get some sort of output there on on save comic. We got the whole object in total. Uh, to further test this, we can do this. We can say console log a comic dot underscore ID. Give me the the ID property of the a comic object. Up on the top where I've got the curly braces in JSON format, that's an object, the JavaScript object. So give me this property. As we're testing it also to, to kind of see it, you could do give me a comic dot unique ID property to see the difference. What's that? Uh, let me see, it's a little bit lower at about 266 inside a function save comic. I'm going to save it and run it. So the first thing that I like to do when I run it in, in Visual Studio after running it uh, is uh, cleaning the, the console so I have new output for me to see. loading up on my device. Let me test it a little bit. I'm going to clean out the console. I'm going to go to save a comic. I'll type the spider number 1 1962 save. So my output is saying, OK, recognize that the was typed into the field. It gives me the whole object, which you can go in there and see individual properties of the object. There's the unique ID, etc. Then I had said, OK, give me a comic dot ID. In this case, SPI. Uh, oops, I typed 119, and then uh, number one and then 1962 so there's that unique ID and then what I had typed in total without spaces and capitalized was the spider number one 1962 let's say another example here I'll type um, Donald Duck number 123 from 1951 save that so the comic had none of those. I, it was Donald Duck. So the first word that it found was Donald. The ID of that is D-O-N-1-2-3-1-9-5-1. And then the other, and I misspelled duck, I put D-U-C-L, the alternate spelling. Donald Duck, 1-2-3-1951. So we have then here a couple of fields that we can use for identification. And still we'll have one more a little bit later because there could still possibly be more than one instance of a comic of a particular number of a particular year, possibly. And then ultimately when we get to that, I have one more solution for that. But if we, if we got up to this point and we're getting this output that it recognizes what is the first letter of the comic, the first word of the comic, if it is bundling it as an object, if it is creating a, the ID as I expected, and the unique ID, then we're on track. And it's a perfect time for a break. And if it didn't quite work, we'll do a little lab time, or a little break, I mean, and then we'll come back in 10 minutes, 7.45.
42.